Good evening everyone. It is a sunny afternoon in Newbridge, which is the home to Jocelyn Davis, who is the Plaid Cymru AM for Swan not South Swan, Wales East. South Wales East. I'm so used to saying Swansea West for some reason. <laughs> um, as you may have seen in the past, uh, Jocelyn has come out as an ESIG user. So we're here to have a chat about her experiences with vaping and her thoughts on the Public Health Wales Bill. So pretty much we're going to start off with how did you start with an e-cigarette? Well, I'd seen them. Uh, I was interested in them because I, even though I wasn't smoking, I didn't want to go back to smoking, although there were occasions I was very, very tempted. So, but I didn't know anybody personally who was um, vaping, so I had a little look on YouTube because I thought this is a device that you've got to know how to use. And then I uh, bought one from, um, can I say the supermarket? Because well, I bought one from a, uh, from a petrol station attached to a large supermarket, uh, went home, set it up, and then realised I didn't have the liquid that goes in it, so I had to go back for that because I knew nothing, nothing uh, about it at all. So I used that for a little while. I wasn't entirely happy with it. So I went into um, a vaping shop in Risca, uh, which is just down the road from here, and spent a, probably about 20 minutes with the young man in there. He showed me the devices, he showed me how to use them, how to fill them, and he explained the differences between them and, uh, and the liquids and so on, and I purchased one. And I can honestly say, that I am absolutely confident that I will not smoke a cigarette again because I've got uh, a, a device that I like, that is reliable and which I enjoy. Right, and on the subject of enjoyment, um, as I'm sure everyone watching is aware, the Public Health Wales Bill kind of takes the enjoyment away through restricting where they can be used. Um, it covers, in its current form, from stage two restaurants, places uh, like hospitals and childcare, for instance. So, what are your thoughts on the current version of the bill regarding nicotine and devices? Well, I, well, I've been using um, this e-cigarette for a little while now, and when I heard that this was being included in the bill. I was very, very disappointed because I've been in the Assembly since 1999, so I remember the debates and the discussions and the inquiries we had about banning um, tobacco use in enclosed uh, public spaces. We took a long time over that decision because we realised that we would be restricting people's liberty, and we, and we did it on the grounds that it was affecting other people's health. So we weren't restricting that because of the smoker or to try to stop people smoking. It was because of the effect on other people, passive smoking, that was the justification for that. So I don't see that if you put uh, e-cigarettes in the same category as tobacco smoking, I think you're sending the entirely wrong message. Uh, this is government telling people that this is a bad thing. And I think that that's the wrong way to start. And in fact, what we ought to be doing is encouraging people who are um, as using tobacco now to think about whether they might switch to a device like this. And we should be normalising giving up. Yeah. And instead of pushing e-cigarettes in the same category as tobacco use. So I don't think that the, the, those assembly members that support this move understand um, smoking. I don't think they understand nicotine uh, addiction, and I don't think that they understand what these devices are about. I think they are just looking at it from the wrong point of view. Right, so um, the Health Minister, Mark Drakeford, um, essentially, in your opinion and your viewpoint as a politician, is going completely the wrong way to um, convey one of the underpinning principles of the bill to improve public health in Wales, essentially, that. Yes, because the bill, there's some very good things in the bill. This isn't just about this. I, I do think if you're going to do something along these lines with e-cigarettes, you should have a standalone piece of legislation. 
because there are some good things in the bill. So it talks about, um, in terms of, say, uh, a tattooing, body piercing, tongue splitting, those things that you would expect government to regulate in order that the public can be safe and things are done in a hygienic fashion. And he's just lump this in because this has never been this proposal uh, to ban the use of e-cigarettes uh, in public places in closed places has never been in a manifesto um, it, it's not really been put to the public and i'm sure a great deal of uh, vapors won't even know that it's going to happen so he's put it into a bill that contains a lot of good things that most of us would want to support it's about the regulation of keeping the public safe this doesn't even fit in the bill, to my mind. So he's, put, he's just using a vehicle um, uh, that's intended for something else to add this in because he does have a personal gripe, I think, about e-cigarettes. Right, so um, if you were involved in the Health and Social Care Committee at Stage 1 and Stage 2, uh, you essentially would have put an amendment forward to completely take cigarettes out? Oh for sure because it's my personal belief that if you want to do it first of all I think you should something as important as this and so as I'm fundamentally taking away people's liberties I think you should uh, put it in a manifesto but I also think you need to be very careful about it and spend a little bit of time on it and investigate it properly and not just add it in to other things that people really, really want to support. Because we could then have a proper discussion in the Assembly and decide whether you want to support this one aspect or not. Because currently, because it's in this bill, you might want to support the rest of the bill and feel obligated to support the bill in its entirety, even though you don't support this aspect of it. And I'm sure uh, those who are watching can see the similarities between this Public Health Wales Bill and other sorts of regulations that we've come across um, European-wide that we've spoken about when I last came to visit you. Um, okay, so if we take um, the next look at how the Public Health Wales Bill is progressing, and you picked up on that most papers probably won't know that this is happening. What would you suggest that they would do before March the 1st, which is the deadline for amendments? Uh, well, of course, we, yes, deadline for amendments. I think they should lobby their own assembly member because it appears to me, because this is a piece of um, a government legislation, uh, the Labour members will be expected to support it however they feel because they're government members and they'll be whipped into doing that. Um, but in the Assembly, there are 60, it's a 60 member Assembly. Labour only holds 30 of those seats. And there's only 29 of those that are allowed to vote because they have the presiding officer. Um, so there are 20, uh, and the Tories have got the deputy presiding officer, so they are non voting positions. So the position is equal. 50-50 in terms of opposition and government. It doesn't happen in legislatures very often. So this legislation cannot pass if all the opposition members oppose it and if all the government members support it. And I don't think that the minister would want to risk all the other good things that's in the bill by losing the bill altogether. So they should lobby hard their assembly members and ask them to justify the way that they are going to vote. I, won't, I don't feel that I can support this bill with this in it. I feel that strongly about it. And we would hope that uh, local constituency AMs um, with enough uh, local vapours that come to them en masse will have the influence to turn their round. If then, you know, yeah. If they're not Labour, but there could be enough doubt put in their minds. Well, yes, I mean it would be in the gift of the uh, of the minister to, to to take this out. Could bring it back at another time as a standalone uh, uh, bill. Could do it. Uh, you know, it, it, it is something that could be left to the next assembly. We talk 
a, a several years over the ban on smoking and everybody thought that it was a good idea to ban it. But we still took a long time because we needed to take the public with us. And I think that this is something that should take we should look at much more carefully. I'm not saying that I would never ever change my mind on it if the evidence was there. But currently it certainly isn't. And I think that what's happening here is completely wrong and I'm not saying that just because I'm a vapor. I know if I hadn't had the conversations that I had uh, with people who knew about this that I would not have been very good at using that device and I, I might not have I, I, I might have just given up on that and I could easily have gone back to um, cigarette smoking and I think other people should be given that same opportunity. So um, if we put a bit of comparison between the discussions about the smoking ban in 2007 and discussions, I'm using that very loosely because the discussions that were had weren't exactly discussions at the HSEC and in plenary. Um, if the process proceeds as it currently is without using vapours in, you know, input as well, do, would you think that the bill would completely go the government's way otherwise? Um, the bill without this in, I think everybody supports the measures that are there because they're perfectly sensible regulations in order to keep the public safe in tattooing and, and that yeah. sort of thing. So so I, I think those things are non-controversial. Although I think that there's some of the evidence uh, that, that, that's been brought there. I think assembly members have had, have had their horizons broadened by learning about some of the some of the things that, that you know that, that, that people do perhaps um, I think there's only two assembly members, or maybe three or four perhaps, that have either, ever even had a tattoo. Um, so a lot of them don't know much about that. I have to say I am one of those. Um, uh, but, um, you know, you don't want to dictate to the public what, you know, what they do, but you want to keep them safe. That's the government's job, isn't it? But in this case, it seems to me with the e-cigarettes, it's not about safety, it's about it seems to me that it's about the minister not liking this, this activity and trying to restrict it because he doesn't like it, so it's not about safety. I don't believe at this point. Now, when it came to the banning of um, uh, uh, tobacco use in public places, we didn't start with legislation and then have a discussion. We started with a discussion that led to legislation and it was, so it was the other way around. So there were groups that were set up, committees set up, especially to look at it, and then they came forward with the recommendation to bring legislation. And then, so in that case, we took the public with us. In this case, we're starting with the legislation, and I don't think that's the right way to do it. Okay. Well, from, from a vapor's point of view, we, saw, we see that. And it's great to hear from a member of the assembly that agrees with us that we shouldn't have had a draft legislation oh, we shouldn't before have. full discussions were taking place. So that's really pleasing to hear and I'm sure everyone out there will agree. Um, we're also aware that uh, you're standing down after this term of assembly and you're a self, self-admitted vapour. So it's not a confession. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but but do you know what? Sorry to interrupt you, but I've spoken to a couple of other um, uh, assembly members who are smokers, and I've said to them, "Why don't you try this? Because you could reduce, at least reduce, uh, your tobacco use. And once you've tried it, I think that you would." would want to give up tobacco use and just stick with this or give you know after a while give this up and they are reluctant to do so because they think that others will disapprove of it so you see this is what's happening is that is that because of the stance of, of the welsh government people think now that this is the wrong thing to do and i don't like i really really don't like that that attitude that people would even be ashamed to say um, that they are vapour. I wouldn't vape in front of you, mind, <laughs> but, um, but I know from my experience of using that device 
that I won't be tempted to use a cigarette ever again. And I want other people to enjoy that feeling that they have finally put tobacco use behind them. That, that, that's fantastic to hear a politician that gets with them. We don't get many of them, but I'm actually glad to be in the company of one right now. Um, to, f to finish off, essentially, as I said, you're stepping down at this election. If we, if we, no. if we trade, traded places, and you were the vapor trying to uh, converse with the Welsh government, because we currently are finding it very difficult. Yeah. If you had one chance to corner the health minister, Mark Drakeford, and express your feelings as a vapor about this legislation, what would it be? Well, I have spoken about this in the Assembly. I, I've made speeches in the Chamber, and I know that a number of the, the Labour backbenchers um, approached me afterwards and said, well, they were pleased to hear a, about this topic from the experience of an ex-smoker and somebody who was vaping. Um, because I think a few of them are incredibly uncomfortable uh, about this move. But what I would say uh, to you, if, 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 I was giving you, if I was giving advice, I think that I would want to stress to the Welsh Government that the Assembly elections, I know the vote on the legislation is very soon, but the Assembly elections are very soon, and the people that want to bring in this legislation and vote for this legislation have to stand accountable for that in the ballot box very, very soon. And I think if we were trading places, I think I would be saying to you if I was lobbying you as my uh, Assembly member, that if you vote for this legislation, you're going to have to justify it to me when I come to vote uh, in May. And I think that you could have a very powerful tool. So I think it's for every vapor, if they don't agree with this legislation, to make their views known now about what they intend to do in the elections coming very, very soon. Right, so essentially, communicate with their AM, be it constituency or regional. Yes. And tell them, especially if they're Labour, but there are other parties out there, um, if you support this bill, I'm not going to vote for you. That's, what it can, that, that's the crunch that we have. Well, it's not very often the campaigning groups have an opportunity that elections are, are nearly upon us. And I think that if you feel strongly about it, I think you have an opportunity here, and I wouldn't waste it. I wouldn't waste that opportunity, because it's not very often that you have the power to stop something and make that known now. And I think some people, especially with the opinion polls as they are at the moment, some people are going to be very uncomfortable about that. Right, um on that bombshell, to quote a well-known previous show on TV, um, <laughs> I'd like to thank Jocelyn for her time today and her uh, welcome to Newbridge. So thank you very much, Jocelyn. We hope to hear from you soon um, as a vapor and how you continue on your journey. Well, thank you very much, and I wish you every success. Yeah. We'll try our best in Wales. We'll try our best.